welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is deploying shared desktop flows. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. Uh, this is something that I've had some fun with over the last week and a half, two weeks, so I thought I would share my learnings with you all. So we've talked about shared desktop flows before on the channel. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out that video where it just talks about sort of the functionality and how you go about calling another share a desktop flow. So I'll leave that where it is. We want to focus more on deployment and permissions in this video. So naturally, as a member of a center of excellence or COE, I will want to go ahead and publish some common desktop flows that other people can go ahead and leverage and take advantage of. One example could be, say, SAP. You know, within an SAP, there's going to be a login script. So something that everyone that's going to automate against SAP needs to go ahead and use. So as a COE member, I could go ahead and record this, make sure it aligns to all of our standards and, and best practices, then go ahead and publish this so that other people can go ahead and use it. Now, when I go ahead and share this desktop flow with others, there's generally two options I have. One, I can share it as a user, which allows someone to go ahead and use the flow, but not go ahead and make any edits. Or I can share as a co-owner, and this would allow someone to go ahead and make edits to the desktop flow itself. So, might be a scenario where I share that SAP login script with my team members that are also part of the COE, so that they could also go ahead and manage that flow as required. And then when it comes to the general population, the quote unquote citizen developers, I would go ahead and share those as user so that they could go ahead and use it, but they couldn't go ahead and modify it itself. Now, when it does come to sharing in these two different modes that I just talked about, we can go ahead and share with individuals on a one-off basis, or what we can go ahead and do is share with a Dataverse team. So we go ahead and create a team inside of Dataverse, then we map that team to an Azure Active Directory group. Then when we put people in that group, they will then get uh, permissions through that team itself. And I think I'll probably go ahead and record a video on that in itself, um, just because some people may not be familiar with that. Now, everything is you know pretty straightforward at this point, right? This is all stuff you've seen inside of the Power Platform. There's a lot of common gestures and you know parallels that are being driven here, so no big surprises. Where the surprises really come in is when it comes down to deploying updates to desktop flows that have already been shared. And that's where we need to go ahead and make a few key decisions. And that's really the purpose of this content here today. Okay, so this is a scenario, I kind of touched on this a little bit in the previous slide, but here we've got a shared COE desktop flow. I've gone ahead and shared it with you know, one team just to illustrate that a team could use it. And then I've also gone ahead and shared it with three individual users. Those users have built their own desktop flows and then they're gonna go ahead and call my shared desktop flow. Now, what's gonna happen here is when we go to import this package for a subsequent time, so after we've deployed it for the first time, we're gonna have a decision to make. And that decision is gonna be around whether we upgrade the solution or we update the solution. And so the key thing to understand here is that when you choose upgrade, you will remove any of these existing permissions. If you choose update, you will preserve these permissions, but naturally there's some sort of caveats when it comes to that as well. So what you really need to think, like when I first experienced this, I was kind of in shock um, and really, you know, I was just overly concerned that any of these users that have a flow that is running on say a schedule or even an ad hoc manner and they suddenly lose permissions to this desktop flow, that could cause a break in their scenario and that could lead to some unexpected downtime for their bots. And so that's where we're gonna focus on this video is understanding when we may wanna use upgrade versus when we wanna go ahead and use update. And you know, really I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here because each has its kind of nuances, but I think what's the most important thing is that you understand the differences so that you can prepare for it. Because 
no one wants to be surprised, especially in production. And so that's kind of the core point here. Now, just to go a little bit further, and we'll see this demonstrated in the demo itself, but you can imagine uh, we've got a landscape where we've got, say, a dev environment and a prod environment. We'll just keep it simple. We've got two environments. We're going to go ahead and we're going to export from dev. And what I'm talking about here, all of my examples are based on managed solutions. I do feel that that's sort of the best practice, the right thing to do. And so in this case, I'm using managed solutions. I export from dev. Then I go ahead and I go into prod. You can see I'm in the prod environment here and I can go ahead and import this managed package. Now, what is a little bit sort of, um, you know, the reason why this isn't, uh, you may not have run into this is it's not overly in your face. Um, if you go ahead and expand advanced settings, you're going to see that we have a few different modes here. And that's where we're talking about upgrade versus update. So if you go ahead and read this, uh, when you upgrade your solution, any components not present in the newest solution will be deleted. So let's think about this. Permissions are something we go ahead and assign to the object in the environment itself. It isn't something that is part of our solution package. And so as a result, when we upgrade, naturally that gets blown away. Um, and so this is where initially I was taken back a little bit because I'm like, well, how can you go ahead and remove permissions? Um, like that doesn't seem like a good idea. But when you actually go ahead and read how this, the behavior of how this works, I get it, it kind of makes sense. And so, you know, if we think about solutions, they support a wide variety of use cases Far beyond RPA, we've got apps, we've got tables, we've got uh, the Power Virtual Agent chatbots. You know, there's a lot of things that can go into a solution. And so when we think about RPA and we think about sharing, that kind of has some different sort of characteristics than perhaps apps and tables and things of that nature. So this kind of makes sense. But in general, what this means is, let's say you had a solution package, it had like five subcomponents or five components you deploy it to prod. Then in your dev environment, you go ahead and say, hey, I no longer need the, all five of these components. I'm gonna delete one. I'm gonna therefore have four. When I go ahead and deploy that package to prod, what's gonna happen is those five components that were there previously are gonna get turfed. And as a result, only the, the, only the new ones, the four, the remaining ones, are then going to be installed in our prod environment. And so as a result, that's where we see the, um, the permissions getting blown away. Now, when we do update, what this is doing is it's essentially saying, okay, in my solution package, I have four components that are listed. For each of those components, I will go ahead and update them in the prod environment should they be there. If they're not present in my solution package and they're already in prod, they will go ahead and they will remain there. So in that whole delete scenario I talked about, that fifth component would remain in production. And so that's when I talked about nuances, this becomes pretty important, like that's a nuance, right? It's something you need to understand. So when it comes to apps and tables and fields and things like that, you know, maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe you don't want to do it in that context. But I would argue in the context of RPA that update is what you want to do because the permissions is huge. Like you can't have these race conditions or tell everyone that might be using your bot, no, 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 take your bots down while I upgrade my bot and then reset your permissions. That's not going to fly well, especially when you have hundreds of users from that perspective. And so in, in this context, in the context of RPA, when you've got a manageable solution, you've got sort of a reasonable number of components in your solution, you can manage the deltas when I'm making changes when I'm not. I feel that update is a better approach here, even though it's called not recommended. And there's been a, a sort of an internal discussion going on whether or not these labels will continue to exist because I think what the reality is, is that it depends. Um, it depends on your scenario in terms of what you're wanting to do. So it's a trade-off. Do I want to run the risk of perhaps having some extra components in my production environment, which I could always go ahead and manually delete, that's not a problem. Or do I want to ensure that my permissions are persistent? And I think that's the decision you have to make. Now, 
You can go ahead and automate the uh, essentially the assignment of those permissions. Um, you know, that's some content I could go ahead and, and create if there's interest. So, so do let me know in the comments. So you could sort of reduce the downtime. You could make that a repeatable process and still use upgrade and sort of be based on that. But you're still going to be bound to a little bit of a race condition. That race condition could just be a few seconds. But having a valuable transaction that gets hung up because of permissions not being there, you know, that's a decision you do have to make. Now, the other thing is, you know, it's like, okay, Kent, what are you doing? Like, this is saying it's the recommended setting. Well, so this is another interesting tidbit that I learned over this past week. Guess what happens if you use DevOps? If you are using the build tools, and I guess this would apply with GitHub as well, that just in general, the Power Platform build tools, the default behavior is update. Um, if you want to go ahead and essentially do an upgrade, um, there's multiple tasks that need to be included. So you need to basically stage an upgrade and then apply the upgrade. So it becomes like a two-step operation itself. So, um, you know, this is another reason why I don't feel so dirty about recommending update in this RPA scenario here. I'm not talking about apps, just RPA, because this is the default behavior. And in fact, this was one of the challenges that I ran into. Um, you know, Daniel Laskowitz and I were sort of collaborating on this particular scenario. And what was really odd was that he couldn't reproduce my issue. But the reason why he couldn't reproduce it was he was using DevOps um, to go ahead and deploy his package. So sure enough, when I went and I validated this end-to-end -end using DevOps, um, I wasn't running into the issue um, because the update is being used. And I had uh, gone ahead and validated this with a colleague, Mark Schwagert. Uh, so thanks, Mark, for the, the chat uh, from that perspective as well. So, um, so yeah, when you use DevOps, you're essentially using update itself as part of the default behavior. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, let's go to see a demo. I'm just going to show you the demo of the manual process. Um, if you're interested in me showing you the automated, uh, hit the comments, let me know. Um, if there's interest, I'll go ahead and record that piece. Okay, so here we are in the Flowmaker portal. I'm in my prod environment. I've already gone through a, a deployment. I've gone ahead and shared it with another user. In this case, um, it's Kent W. I'm logged in here as, as Lydia. Now, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've got a solution package here you can see. I've gone ahead in my dev environment, made a change, and then now I'm gonna go ahead and import it. And we're gonna go ahead and import it using upgrade, and then we're gonna come back to this page. And we're gonna see what happens here with our shared with dialog box that's here. And uh, what I would expect is that the KW Kent's access is going to disappear. All right, so let's go ahead, let's head into solutions. Okay, we're in solutions. Now let's go ahead, let's click on import. Let's click on browse. Find our package. Click next. This is that advanced settings. Uh, for this time, we're gonna go ahead and leave it as upgrade, so that is fine. Let's go ahead, let's click import. Um, I'll go ahead and, and pause the recording here uh, just so you don't have to watch uh, this tick along. Okay, so we can see that our solution has been imported successfully. Uh, let's go ahead, let's just click into it. Okay, let's launch our desktop flow. And okay, sure enough, our permissions are gone as expected because we went ahead and did the upgrade route. So let's go ahead, let's now add Kent back into it. So at this point, if Kent uh, had any flows that were running and that were using this shared desktop flow, they would be failing right now. So we'll go ahead, we'll reshare with Kent so he can go ahead and you know continue to use it. At this point, if his flow ran, it would be fine um, because he now has permissions. Okay, so what I've done is um, in dev, I've gone ahead while that was recording, or while basically while that was uh, imported or paused, I went ahead and made a change. We're gonna go ahead and import this new version, except this time we're going to use update and recall here, we do have the correct permissions assigned. So let's head back over into, we're still in our prod environment, we're gonna import this new package you can see it's currently at version 10. We're going to install version 11 here. 
Okay, now this time we're going to go ahead and expand advanced settings. We're going to click on update. We want to update, not upgrade. Once again, I'll pause the recording. Okay, so that succeeded. And here, let's go ahead, let's open it up. Then let's go ahead and launch it. And sure enough, permissions are preserved. There we go. So that concludes the demo, but hopefully that does illustrate the difference between upgrade and update and why it's important to understand the behaviors of each of those different modes. Uh, have any questions around this? Go ahead, just drop those comments in. I'll be happy to take a look at them and, and respond. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead, find me at Weirzy. Thanks for checking this out on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Likes, comments, always appreciated. Thanks for checking this out. We'll catch you next week. Have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.